It's the Locked On Flyers podcast for Tuesday, February 13th, your daily dose of Flyers news, analysis, and high quality content that seems to be saying a win is a win a lot lately. Yeah, this wasn't a clean one. Your Locked On Flyers, your daily podcast on the Philadelphia Flyers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey there, and thanks for making Locked On Flyers your first listen every day. I am Rachel Donner. You can find me on the app formerly known as Twitter at rmiriam. I'm here, as always, with Russ Cohen, who's on all your favorite social media apps at Sportsology. We, as a show, are on Instagram, Threads, Blue Sky, and Twitter at Locked On Flyers as well. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus best. Bets. If your best bet of five dollars or more wins, visit fanduel.com slash locked on to get started. You can find us over on YouTube or on the SiriusXM app or anywhere you listen to podcasts. Subscribe to get our latest episode as soon as it's available here on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Uh, going into this game against Arizona, we talked about it maybe being a little bit of a trap game. Uh, but uh, I, I didn't expect it to go this way at all. Uh, thankful that the Flyers came out with the win in the end. And it was tough for them because Tyson Forster was out. Uh, Risto was also out. The two of them are banged up a little bit. I hope both of them can get back in for the outdoor game. I, I, I think that like the story of this game for me was the inability to capitalize on momentum for the Flyers. Yeah, I think that's fair. I mean, they kept having to come back from behind and um, mm-hmm. a lot of a lot of room out there at times for Arizona. I mean, Urson had a good game. He didn't have a great game. Um, but yeah, there was there was a lot of missed opportunities there on defense. And, you know, th- the thing is, there's also missed opportunities with some of these young players. I mean, Ali Lixell got four minutes and 37 seconds or something like that. And, and Igor Zamula didn't even break the seven minute mark. So it's like, you know, and with the power play as awful as it is, and it's awful, Zamula could have definitely helped on the power play. And this is where you scratch your head. Yeah. I think that was the biggest question for me in terms of Zamula, right? Lixell, you know, I want him to play more, but I understand what was happening there with Zamula. I did not, especially when the power play was unsuccessful. Why not switch it up a little bit? Right. Um, You know, of course, it going one for eight in this game. Um, You know, I feel like we're kind of being hard on this team for this game, which was a win. And we do know that Um, there was a a lot of good stuff there, too. But I just feel like that this one was really just it was hard to watch in a lot of yeah, they weren't like telltale signs that they were gonna win this game. Um, you pointed out to me how Lawton really scored on that on that wraparound where defenseman got in Vegmoka's way. I mean, it wasn't like I said, it just it wasn't clean. Like Morgan Frost had a really good game. There were guys that had good yep. games. Uh yep. and, and that's fine, but we always have to talk about the big picture here. And the big picture is yeah, guys with development, like just send Lixell back. You're wasting his time. Um we're not going to see him anymore this year. It's a shame for him because I think he's a good guy. And I think um, something that you don't really think about, but I see it in the locker room is like, you know, Lixell's really good friends with Urson. So look, when those guys are together, it's happy, you know, they're buddies and whatever, but there's, they're just, there's not going to be an opportunity. And, and Zamula, you know, I wrote the other day in a tweet that, you know, I kind of wonder if he's going to be included in, in, in a trade and, he might because the only time he plays, you know, are situations like this and he's not really getting to, to show what he can do, especially if he's not even going to be on the power play now. I think that was um, very apparent there, but uh, I do want to talk more about Morgan Frost because Mm -hmm. he did have an excellent game. I just felt like he was everywhere out there on the ice, uh, trying to make something happen on every single rush, every single shift. He was out there drawing penalties right and left. um, And then, of course, scoring that penalty shot goal um, in one of those penalties drawn. And I just feel like, I mean, I don't want to say 
never say never here because you never know with with torts but i feel like okay we're done morgan frost is on this team and he's a regular and we're i'd like to be able to say that i can't say that yet i'm with you i i there's this little thing in the back of my head that says okay you know frost is building his trade value how do i know he's not going to get traded i i don't know yet i'd like to be able to say he's a regular on the team because i think he's good enough to be that but you know the coach sometimes has other ideas of who his players are and who they aren't i mean the one thing that's really certain for me which was i was certain of it at the beginning of the year but we gave it a chance was that you know right now john tortorella is driving the bus It'll be up to Danny Briere how he wants to deal with things at the trade deadline to kind of shape the future. But you can't you can't rely on John to shape the future. That's really the way it is. Yeah, it, he's doing such a good job in the present that it's sometimes hard to think about those things. Yeah. And, you know, he's doing some really good things in terms of motivation, in terms of building mm-hmm. that locker room, in mm-hmm. terms of. Like I, I cannot get over how resilient this team is, game after game after no game, question. and even in this one, like the fact they got an empty net goal, like it feels like eons since the last time True. they were able to do that. And so I think that was good for them as well. But um, I, I just think there's so much good happening. But I do think that there's like this little nagging thing with the the big picture, and and you know we talked about it talking about Lixell and Zamula and. Um, you know, maybe those two are part of the Flyers' future, maybe not, but I uh, certainly don't have enough information to make a decision myself on what I would do. And I think that's the part of it. It's like, well, if I don't feel that way, how could they? Right, but at this point of the year, you would have liked to have known one way or the other, and you don't know. Mm-hmm. Exactly. I think that's the, the big part of it as well. Um, I do also want to talk about uh, Scotty Lawton. Mm-hmm. who also had an excellent game here. Um, you know, we just talked about his wraparound goal. That was a, a really strong effort there. Um, and of course, you know, on the connect knee goal, I, I tweeted about it, but I, I love that combination when Lawton feeds to connect knee. I think yeah. it's, it is a winning combination a lot of the time. And that was good to see, but, you know, and people are saying, Oh, you know, he's upping his trade value, but, I don't know. I, I still don't know that that's a, a trigger they want to pull. Uh, I mean, that's the one I, I struggle with because you don't have to trade Scotty Lawton right now. He's got term on his contract and he is definitely good um, for the team. He's good for the young players when they get to play with him. Um, I just, there must be somebody in management saying, well, we're just not going to renew his contract. Like that must be the reason that there's talks is that they probably don't see a path to renewing his contract. And, you know, and if that's the case, then yes, at some point you're going to trade him and, you know, his value will never be as high as it was last year. It's just the way it is, but you know, he's got DC yeah. value. And so, you know, I think that that's, that's the thought here. Could be, uh, but we have a few more weeks to, uh, figure that out and the flyers have a few more weeks to figure that out um i think that you know aside from that i think it was really good they came out of this one with the win um i think it's the kind of game that they need to win all the time i i don't think it's you know you lose a game like this it could be really demoralizing yeah sure i mean yeah they didn't come back and have the comebacks um it would have been a really even different post game, but you know, but they did pull it out and that's fine. You know, like I'm saying, the teams behind them keep winning too. And so they're going to have to keep up the pace and it's, it's not an easy thing to do. I've watched teams try and do it. And now we're starting to see guys with the block shots, having it start to take its toll a little. And that's, you know, that's the the thing. And that's where you're going to have to see where the, resiliency comes in because i'm never going to blame the guys if they run out of gas because they just can't block any more shots that's why sometimes that strategy is a hard one to to hold up over a whole season we'll see what happens next against toronto who's the next opponent for the flyers we talked a bunch about prospect development uh, as it relates to this game against arizona 
We've got a whole lot more to talk about when it comes to the Phantoms, and we will do that coming up next. Get all the buckets with your first bet on FanDuel, America's number one sports book, because right now new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any $5 winning bet. That's $150 if your bet wins. Bet on all your favorite NBA players and teams like the Sixers with quick bets, live same-game parlays, exclusive props, and more. Just visit FanDuel.com slash LockedOn and shoot your shot. FanDuel, official sportsbook partner of the NBA. On tomorrow's show, we will be having a mailbag segment, so get those questions in. You can email us at LockedOnFlyers at Gmail. You can comment on our YouTube channel, uh, send us a message via Twitter, Carrier Pigeon, you know, whatever you want. <laughs> but uh, we are here for it. Uh, in the meantime, it is Tuesday, so we will be talking about our friends in Lehigh Valley uh, just a little bit of roster switcheroos this week. Uh, Zade Wisdom was sent down to the Royals. We did talk about that as a possibility because he wasn't getting any playing time. Yeah, it's it's a shame. Uh, I don't know what the future of Zade Wisdom holds. It may not hold anything in Philly. That just, that just may be the reality. But uh, there's a little something there as far as him possibly being a fourth liner. But you know, it might take a while now. It might take another two, three years. Yeah, and uh, Matt Brown was called up from Reading. And, you know, we talked a, a bunch about Matt Brown around uh, development camp and how... And then a little you know, later, a couple weeks ago, too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And how he's, you know, stood out in his few opportunities he's had uh, to, you know, get some eyes on him in, in the Flyers organization. And I have a sneaking suspicion that he's going to stick for a little while with the Phantoms. And uh, he did contribute getting the shootout winner in the first of two shootout wins huh. for the Phantoms this weekend. So we got some wins, but uh, by the skin of their teeth, we'll say. Yeah, yeah. I mean, a win's a win, although you hemorrhage points, too. Um, look, I mean, Matt Brown probably should have gotten a, a look earlier, right? We both agreed on that. I'm mm -hmm. happy for him. I think there is offensive ability there. I get that he's not the biggest guy. But as far as just talking in Phantom's terms, they they could use the extra oomph. Yeah, and it was interesting because I, I would say in Friday's game against uh, Wilkes-Barre Scranton, so Matt Brown did get the, the shootout winner, like I was talking about, but he did have kind of a, an uneven game, I would say, overall. And I feel like he's a, a prime example of when we're talking about questioning lineup decisions with the Phantoms, because he was scratched in Saturday's game uh, in favor of Adam Karashek, who also has not gotten a, a ton of ice time. So this no. is like a ding on Adam Karashek in any way, shape or form. But this is OK. A guy just comes up from Reading. He's adjusting. He makes a, a few mistakes, but nothing like egregious that can't be fixed he gets your game winning goal for you and you scratch him the next day and you know in that second game on saturday they went 11 7 so to get aaron adam karashik in on d they have you know an 11 7 lineup and karashik even played forward as part of the game and so it was just weird the whole thing was weird, and I, I feel like you didn't really give Matt Brown the chance to rectify those mistakes right away. And this is when you hear Lappy, you know, post game a lot of times. You say he says, "Well, the kids are going to make mistakes. This is a developmental league, and you know they have to learn from them." And the, it, there's just not a good rhyme and reason to when you punish a guy by scratching him the next game for mistakes versus when you throw him back in. I don't understand what the decision-making process is here. Yeah, I would say, you know, again, learn from them. A lot of times you could learn from them by continuing the play, not from watching at the bench. Now, if it's a mistake that's over and over and over and over again, sure. But he just came up. And so mm -hmm. I understand you're, you're, why you're confused about that. I am too. Yeah, so that was kind of like my big question mark for the weekend in terms of a, a thing that I don't understand about the the coaching decisions here. Now, 
I will say that this Phantoms team is absolutely suffering from not having Tanner Lazinski in the lineup, yeah. um, not having Louis Belpedio in the lineup as a defensive stalwart. I think, you know, some of these games where other teams are getting back into it, if Belpedio is out there, and and I can't believe I'm saying this, but even Garrett Wilson was in there, I think some of it would have been prevented because those guys are going to just step it up a notch physically. And Belpedio is a solid defenseman. So I I, th I think that that is leading to what the other main issue is, is that uh, the Phantoms are letting other teams back into games. Like on Friday, they had a 4-2 lead that right. they blew. And then, you know, they had to go through a, a back and forth over time. And then eventually they won in the shootout. But, you know, so they're missing some guys. They're making some weird lineup decisions. And ultimately, you know, it's it's weird because they did get two wins out of the weekend. But it just, they didn't feel good, if that makes any sense. No. So I did some numbers crunching. And compared to last year, Last year, they got 80 points. They're at 47, and they had um, 37 wins. Regular season, you know, regular um, wins, no um, no overtime. Just to kind of be on pace for last year, they would have to win 17 in regulation out of the next 27. That's hard. I mean, they're at 47 points. I don't even know if they're going to get to 80. I would bet against that. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Um, you know, it, it's not a perfect scenario, but no, and they just won two games. So you would think that, you know, I could, you know, make a better case. It's hard to make that case right now. It absolutely is. Um, and I, you know, I think that's just kind of where my major concerns are right now is I, I just don't know that this team is, is playoff worthy. And I, I don't think that they're able to make adjustments like coaching isn't making this team adjust well. And I, I think that it's a huge issue. Now, are there individual standouts and guys that are doing well? Always. Yeah. Sure. Always. And um, I want to talk about Elliot Denoyer specifically because okay. um, I feel like, you know, we've been not um, hugely positive about him. And, and to be fair, his numbers are way down from last year, right? Yes. And in some ways, that's to be expected because last year, I think, was like overproduction on his part, right? He just okay. played well above expectation. Right. That happened. But I, yeah. And, and so I didn't really expect him to score as many goals and points as last year, but I expected it to be higher. The, the one thing I will say over the past few weeks is that his other game elements have improved and he's contributing. And I think that it's really important to look at that because you look at his play on the power play. I think his puck movement and his like hockey IQ is really good on that front. He's winning a ton of face-offs and he's doing some playmaking that he wasn't earlier in the season. He's got right. three assists in his last five games. And so I feel like this isn't, like there's an opportunity here for this season to not be disappointing when all is sit, said and done. I think that it's going to be seen it, in a bigger arc of his development as a growing year that he's laying a foundation and it's going to be up to him next year to put it all together. I, I do see that as a strong possibility. Okay. I mean, there's always a chance of that. My only thing is, you know, what if he's turning into like a, a fourth line checker in front of our eyes? That could be happening, too. I don't think that's the case, though. OK, I really don't. Because he's going to have to pick it up offensively then for sure. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I just think he's trying to round out his game right now, okay. because if, if the goals aren't coming, he's going to get better in other aspects of his game so that when the goals do come, he's more of a complete player and can take that step you know, maybe at some point next season to the NHL level and try it out. I, right. I really think that's that's the goal, right, is to maybe mid-season next season to get that call up and, and get that opportunity. So if he can lay the foundation for the rest of this season, get a scoring touch back at the beginning of next season, I think there's something still there. Um, but, you know, that remains to be seen. I'm projecting here, right? I But... Right. But, but based on what I've seen, I feel like he's doing the work and we'll see if it, if okay. 
it pans out for him. You know, I'm I don't happy, know. I'm happy to hear about that. That's good. Um, you know, in the end, you know, he's going to get another year. So next year will be really important for him. Yeah, I think so. I, I absolutely think so. And I think what he does this off season in terms of training, in terms of, um, you know, what he, what skills he focuses on, I think that's going to have a huge impact as well. So when he comes into camp next year, like he is dialed and ready to go because he's going to have to make an impression early and often, I think. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. No, I think you're right. I think you're right about that. So I do want to talk about some other guys and the goaltending and, and whatnot, um, including J.R. Avon um, and uh, some of the other the lines that they have been using. And we will do that coming up next. It is a very important point in the season for Flyers fans. The team is still in the playoff hunt, but regardless of where we are, I want to remind you that you can win big by playing daily fantasy hockey on Sleeper, the official daily fantasy app of the Locked On NHL Network. Sleeper is our number one choice for daily fantasy sports and especially daily fantasy hockey because with Sleeper, you can win 100 times your cash in daily fantasy hockey contests. You can also play daily fantasy NFL, NBA, Major League Baseball and college football when they're in season on Sleeper and entries can be made in under a minute. All you have to do is pick whether NHL superstars like Connor McDavid, Sidney Crosby or Austin Matthews plus Flyers all-stars like Travis Konechny will record more or less in, than their Sleeper projections for things like goals, assists, saves, plus minus and more in any given game. To win 100 times spent on Sleeper, you have to correctly predict the outcome of eight player stats. You heard me, you can win 100 times your money playing daily fantasy hockey with Sleeper, so start paying attention and nail those picks so you can start winning big. Use the promo code at LOCKEDONNHL and you'll get up to $100 match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. That's code LOCKEDONNHL. See Sleeper's terms of use for details and locational availability. Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with local experts of Locked On, plus national shows covering every league like Locked On NHL. Go to Locked On Sports Today on YouTube and subscribe. So I also want to talk about J.R. Avon because um, he scored a shootout goal in both of the shootouts. <laughs> Uh, this weekend. Um, he seems to be a go-to guy on that front. And uh, he has, I believe, four shootout goals this season. He's the top shootout uh, scorer in the AHL. He's four for five overall this season. Um, and you can see it in his skills. I think you can see it translate a bunch into game action. And what was fascinating i thought uh because of the matt brown situation that they took him out um it gave jr avon the opportunity to play with jacob goucher and uh -huh. samu tuamala on saturday and i felt like that was a really good combination there um i felt like it gave jr avon some opportunities to play with a guy like samu tuamala and some speed they both have the speed and yeah and the hands and and so to be able to develop and Goucher has actually been playing really well too. He um he's gotten some points recently, um and his face off skills are are pretty strong. So it's it's a really good combination, and I hope to see more of it. Yeah, no, I like it. I I, I like the sound of it. I think Avon does need somebody with him for sure to get the most out of him, and I do think Tuamala is is a guy that certainly compliments him. Like you said, both have equal speed to a is not as much of a playmaker as maybe, uh, but he definitely, you know, that's fine. You could have him be the scorer and Avon will still find the points. I, I like it. I do. Yeah. I think there's something to that and I want to see more of it um, in the coming uh, weeks. Uh, for the Phantoms, I think that's really important to get some, you know, chemistry going and to maybe rack up more goals, you know, especially like that game on Saturday when they played Bridgeport. Um, Bridgeport is a terrible team. 
they cannot buy goals for anything. And so their kind of style of play is a very similar actually to the Barry Trotts, New York Islanders, as opposed yeah. to, you know, this is the Bridgeport Islanders, but right. it's just like drag them down and duke it out. That's really the style, right? And the fact that, you know, the Phantoms were only able to score one regulation goal on them was like not ideal. So I just, I want to see more combinations that are going to spark more offense um, and, and figure out ways to do that. I think that um, the Denoye line, you know, talking about Elliot Denoye being with Brendan Furry and Wade Allison, I think has been good for all of those guys. Yeah, I can see that. Allison's, you know, Allison has continued to be productive um, and is kind of moving up in the goals scored for the phantom. So that's always a good thing. Uh, so I feel like there's some good opportunities there. They just have to like, give it a shot for a little bit. Okay. Um, so here's a question though. When Ali Lixell comes back and I'm sure it'll be soon, uh, especially since they haven't played on the fourth line, which makes no sense. Um, and we've seen that before. What's going to happen with Bobby Brink. Now, Bobby Brink, mm -hmm. Again, I look at his numbers. I look at his salary. Uh, he's arbitration eligible. So can the Flyers afford to give him more than a one-year deal? I don't know. They've already, you know, when they signed him out of school, he got performance bonuses, uh, signing bonuses rather. And so, like, he has another signing bonus coming to him. And, I, you know, he hasn't really delivered on what they, what the team wants him to deliver on. And so now in an arbitration year where he doesn't have big numbers, I probably have to sign him to a one-year deal. I know people are going to be like, well, but what if he has a good year? Well, then I'll pay him. But I mean, to sign him to a two-year deal because you're afraid of walking him to unrestricted free, free, unrestricted free agency, he's going to have to do a lot better in Lehigh to earn another you know, two-year contract, I think. Yeah, I think, you know, since that first weekend where he scored three goals in two games, uh, the production has not been there. Um, he's got two assists in his last five games, which for his standards, it's not enough. It's yeah. absolutely not enough. Now I will say, um, especially in the Saturday game, he made some really good plays. And especially when he was on the power play, I thought like the effort is there. He's creating plays, he's creating chances. Um, but like, I think he's emphasizing the other parts of his game more than his production. Um, in terms of trying to be a good teammate, be a good playmaker. Sure, that, um, and there's nothing and wrong with that. But you know no. there's a point where you have to rely on your bread and butter if you're going to turn into exactly. something and you have him on the top line not to be an assist guy. I could tell you that. Right, <laughs> right. And, and that's where the problem lies in that I think that he's doing what he's been asked to do in terms of improving other aspects of his game. And right. Tortorella mentioned that specifically that, that that's why he's getting the ice time in Lehigh Valley right. is to round out his game and play better. Right. And get him more of a complete game. And if you weigh too much on that side of things and don't have the production to go with it, that's where you run into problems. And my take on the whole contract situation is they're not even going to think about it until the off season because they need to see the full breadth of this second half of the season of him with Lehigh Valley to make those decisions. Yeah, I, I agree, but I'm just, I'm pointing it out to people to understand like what's at stake for him. Yeah. So, you know, he turns 23 in July. You have to start making some hard decisions. Like I told you, they're, they're going to move on from Wade Allison. I'm sure of that. Um, yep. You don't want Brink to fall closely behind that but you know right now it's up in the air yeah i think that you know there's a lot of decisions to be made and a lot of you know choices and i i feel like you know looking at the use of prospects or evaluation of prospects we've you know had issues with that all season long for the flyers um you know to some degree at least and there there could be a scenario where the flyers you know they've by all accounts, outperform themselves this season, right? right? And so are they going to take a step back next season from a points perspective to work on the actual rebuild part where they have got more prospects in the lineup? Could be, but I, not gonna I think... You know, like the coach isn't going to outwardly say that. It'll really right. be up to the GM with what he leaves yeah. in lineup-wise. Yeah, yeah. Exactly, exactly. And, and that's where I think it could be going. I don't know that it will. 
But uh, in the meantime, for the Phantoms, uh, interesting week ahead. Only one game on Saturday uh, uh, where Syracuse will be in town. They were supposed to have a second game that week, but it got rescheduled to earlier in the season. So um, it's a weird one game week, but they've got a three game week the following week. So we're going to look at the next two weeks as like a real critical. Yeah, a, a real critical juncture for them but uh we will be back on tomorrow's show looking at the flyers in terms of the playoff run versus the trade deadline and and you know making choices here because this month is all about choices for the flyers and we'll have your mailbag questions so you can send them in via twitter at locked on flyers you can email us at locked on flyers at gmail or comment over on youtube i'm rachel i'm on twitter at r miriam that's r m i r i a m i'm russ i'm at sportsology s-p-o-r-t-s-o-l-o-g-y have a great day